Thank you, Hank. Uh, it's nice to see you again. Uh, so I will try to explain to you, to describe a, a nice incident that we handled just recently. And I will try to explain during that the next 30 minutes or so uh, on, on the reasons that we act, how we act, uh, what we do, and maybe how we do it mainly on the tactic level of uh, how we investigate and what are the uh, reasons that we investigate certain incidents. And on the other hand is what we do that in a nation level and how we mitigate uh, such an incident. So um, just a quick uh, intro. I've been a part for the, uh, in the business, cybersecurity business for the last 20 years. Uh, private sector, government sector, and national security agencies. Uh, I've been all around uh, doing regulatory work and uh, other jobs uh, all over. In the last three, almost four years, I've been part of the incident response and cyber operation. I'm actually leading that group within the INCD and all the operative uh, uh, incidents that we're handling are under my responsibility. So, IMCD is actually holding a 24-7, 365 days uh, call center, which actually uh, serves as a, as a first aid for any organization in Israel that wants to have help regarding any incident that he's having or he's suspicious of, is suspecting of having. So everyone can call that uh, hotline, receive a human answer, can send email as well and uh, get a help or first aid help. There are different kinds of uh, methods that we help organizations. Some of them are uh, just offering a playbook. Some of them are asking them to uh, go to the private sector and ask help from uh, another company. It depends on the situation. It depends on our special specialty and our uh, added value that we can uh, offer. So our incident starts on uh, August 31st, when we get three calls from different organizations regarding a suspicious email, potentially a malicious email that the same retailer, electronics retailer has sent to them. One of them was stopped the, with the mail relay or a, you know, defense system, and some of them actually managed to get through. Now, that is not uncommon within uh, INCD. And just to give you a taste of what we're handling, uh, there are roughly 1,312 uh, phishing events that we receive a year. Now, remind you, 2020, Corona year, uh, we are all handling different kinds of uh, uh, situation. Uh, and once we expected, maybe hoped that the cyber incident will be, uh, the amount will be uh, uh, descending, we found out that it actually got a bit worse. So no one actually uh, uh, thought that would be the consequence. But during the three months of July, August and September, which is around the time of this incident, we found an increase of the uh, 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 phishing incidents that were reported to us. The challenge is, what do we do with such a number? It's very hard to investigate and perform a forensic uh, investigation on each and every one of them. Uh, our uh, call center, our 119, which offers the first aid, performs initial checks. And through that, we understand and decide how we operate around that incidents, incident. Now, in order to understand better what is the damage potential from that indication, from that electronics retailer, we performed a webbing check around that organization. We found some interesting information which was actually available to everyone. Uh, we found that is working with critical infrastructure organization, it was working with government offices. It was working with almost every sector of the uh, public sector within Israel. So 
I can only assume that you will agree with me that it needs special attention from IMCD. That is what we thought and we decided that we need to perform a deeper investigation and actually uh, give special resources to that organization. From that moment, we decided to send a field manager, one of our guys, uh, directly to that organization. That is one of the methods that we work in order to uh, gather more information. Now, that is very challenging for a government office to call a, a private company and say, hi, this is the INCD. We want to interest you in uh, some information that we have. We got reports of something that may be happening within your network. And that is very challenging for them to accept that as uh, something for their own beneficial and is a, a part of our job to try and convince them and to let them understand a little bit better that what we do and how we do it. We work with full cooperation and with a, a, almost always a complete transparent activities with the organization and we offer our services not only to uh, investigate the organization in order to remove the threat from that specific network but in order to gather what is needed in order to share the information to the other uh, to the whole public sector within israel the industry is government everyone who is a uh, part of our mailing list and etc so at that point, uh, we actually uh, contact that organization and to our surprise, uh, we got full cooperation and we started performing our first activities within the organization's network. Okay, uh, that was on the September 1st. We are now uh, conducting our investigation and managing to find some uh, uh, some indications of first activity starting November, February 2020. Uh, that means around seven months of the uh, uh, attacker doing whatever he wants within that organization. And I will show you a few things that we found. Uh, as you can see uh, and guess, there is a huge activity within that network but we'll try to give you some some examples of things that we found first of all the initial access vector was using two vulnerabilities public vulnerabilities that everyone knew um, but the most in, important thing for us was to find that the release date was february 11 and the uh, the player that uh, actually got access to that organization did this two or three days after the release of that vulnerability after the release of the uh, rce uh, this was very wo worrying for us and that was very quick relatively to other things that we've seen and it was very uh, interesting to see that and understand what he was uh, looking for of course that made us uh, very alert to all other vulnerabilities and trying to find mechanism on how to find uh, uh, other organizations that were attacked by that specific uh, vulnerability. And I will explain a little bit that a little bit later. So a little bit uh, on what he did there. So we've seen him uh, use the vulnerability, gain access, running Mimikatz in order to gather whatever is needed from that directory. We've seen him use uh, open source web shell in order to uh, gain persistence and schedule tasks, which run on a weekly basis. Um, we've seen them even uh, try to get to other customers of that organization. And one of the things that we've seen is what remember the emails that they uh, sent through that organization so we investigated a little bit on that and we've seen the process of that work now the interesting thing about this is i know you can't most of you may, may most of you can't read hebrew but i can assure you this is very good hebrew 
And I can assure you that uh, the guy who did this is not a native Hebrew speaker. I can sign on that. Now, one other thing that is very interesting. Remember I said he was there for seven months. This email was actually part of a, a business process that was made with one of the customers. And he was actually replying a message with a very legit uh, syntax that says uh, that actually continued the conversation and persuaded the victim to open the link. Now, once it opened the link, uh, a zip file was downloaded. From there, two things happened. First, registration uh, with the Canary token. And the other one is the payload, which actually um, contained the malware itself, which actually allowed the, uh, the attacker to do whatever he wanted in there. One thing that was very strange for us, once the file, the payload was activated, there was a window, Windows Defender summary fake alert on that client that said, don't worry, everything is okay. Please continue your work and everything will be all right. Now, that's one method that we've seen uh, uh, actually happen. Uh, the other method was just sending the URL, the, directly the URL without an attachment. Uh, the URL will open the same uh, info uh, docx with the registration to the Canary token. And from there, a payload uh, with the same uh, issues uh, and the same method transmitting to a C2 server. And from there, everything was uh, free. Uh, the attacker was free to work. The interesting thing about this method is once the um, um, the uh, sorry about the previous method. Once the attacker opened the attachment, uh, the thing that what he saw was a legit document that was relevant to that specific business process, and that specific document was part of the uh, attack itself. So we found it very interesting to see the relevance that the uh, attacker. Uh, made to the specific business process of the organization. Sorry about that, just a second. Okay, so we've seen the initial access, we've seen the mimic cards, we've identified the web shells and the schedule task. We created a heat map uh, of the organization of where, of where the attacker got access to, where he left his persistence, and we managed to clear that to clear all that. On top of that, as we all know, once you clean and remove the threat, you have to do some uh, defense actions in order to make sure he won't come back. So the organization got recommendations from us so uh, to actually prevent the return of that specific attacker. He managed to patch the VPN, patch the uh, exchange server, uh, put a MFA on the users uh, uh, connecting from uh, remote access and change all the passwords within the organization, which, as we all know, is not that easy to do on a, a, a live and operational organization. But as, as he understood the threat, as he understood the potential of losing his, uh, his business, uh, he stopped, every, stopped everything and actually did that. As part of our uh, methodology, uh, we've seen attackers get back to the same organizations because they are very interested in what's going on over there and what's, uh, in how they can continue because they found a good thing. They've been there for seven months. Uh, they want to return once they're kicked out of the organization. So. We leave our monitoring equipment there. And one thing we, we see is on September 15, the attacker returns to the network and gains full control over everything that is uh, uh, left there. Domain admin, mimic cards, schedule task, all over again with uh, all the power that he needed and full access again. We were. Uh, uh, let's
let's uh, call it, we were surprised of the quick ability for him to get back to that organization. What we found out once we tracked that back, we found something very interesting. Through the business process of that organization, they're using uh, remote control applications. Some of them they use, and some of the ones you see here, they do not use. The, uh, the player itself, the attacker, installed remote control on the uh, developers' uh, computers, their PCs, and uh, without them noticing, he created users, specific users, and managed to get back there. By the way, at the start of our investigation, uh, we asked whether they know this kind of uh, uh, remote control applications, and we indicated them to the uh, organization, and they didn't have a clue, so they didn't want to remove them. Interesting. Of course, once we found that and we managed to uh, uh, investigate that, uh, the organization removed the remote control application. Uh, it changed again all the passwords with all the uh, meaning of that regarding the business logic. Uh, he reduced the remote control software to one, and now he's working only with that application. Now, um, in order to understand a little bit better this incident, first of all, as I mentioned before, INCD is conducting forensic investigation in an organization in order to extract whatever is needed, the indications of that attack, uh, and share them quickly and widely as possible. In this case, we issued a TLP white alert, which has all the information regarding the TTPs, regarding uh, what he did, how he did it, when he did it, and with some, of course, examples. Not only did we do that, we actually shared over 300 indicators that are relevant to that attack. That's a lot to one company. I'm sorry. Um, now, if you want to know how we, how we share our information, because that's very important for us to uh, actually expose that. We have a specific uh, um, portal that is called Cybernet, which actually connects uh, all sorts of organizations, CISOs, SOCs, uh, several uh, uh, security companies within Israel that are part of this community. And that platform allows us to share quickly, very quickly, uh, almost directly to the um, security devices of several organizations, uh, indicators that may be, uh, not maybe, but they are malicious, that we can sign that they are malicious. So we issued a quick type, a TLP white alert in order to protect our uh, public sector and in order to receive feedback on whether or not they identified even more activities as such that were uh, described in our alert. So on top of that, of course, we issued a, a report to the retailer describing exactly what we did, how we did it, and uh, what we did within the organization, including uh, all the uh, findings that we got. And uh, from there, we moved on. Um, our investigation showed three distributors, three main distributors uh, that were actually part of that campaign. All the distributors were exploited by the same method, the exchange vulnerabilities. Uh, they were used in order to spread the spear phishing uh, emails. Uh, they were at that point the same method, very uh, oriented the, to the victim uh, with very uh, convincing method in order to uh, click whatever they wanted them to click. And uh, we've seen them uh, use all sorts of recipients, as you can see, a small amount of recipients to a large number 
uh, of addresses that were uh, actually the victims. Um, these three distributors were investigated by us uh, and we've seen them, once we've seen the first one, we managed to find the same actor on the same uh, on the, the other distributor with the same tools and the same method uh, so it was very easy and very quick to understand now uh, just to uh, tell you on another action that we took regarding the mitigation of that attack on a national scale once we discovered the two uh, vulnerabilities were exploited we have a special team that is in charge of scanning the entire uh, Israeli uh, cyber surface and uh, trying to detect organizations that are vulnerable. They use all the tools that you can imagine, Shodan and uh, some other tools that uh, are actually self-developed. And through those tools, they manage to create, create a list, a huge list of organizations that are vulnerable to those uh, vulnerabilities trying to understand which of the organizations are behind those IP addresses and contacting them specifically. Our uh, national CERT, our 119 call center actually calls each and every company and make sure first, they know that they are vulnerable. Second, make sure they close and update whatever it is needed to be updated. It's those vulnerabilities and others um, on the same uh, on the same time. So uh, once we discovered uh, the three uh, three distributors, once we handle that, uh, we managed to create a whole map of everything that happened. What we've seen is that um, by October, mid October, which is around uh, let's say six weeks from uh, when we started. The initial investigation, the first investigation in the electronic retailer, we've seen 167 organizations that were hit by that campaign. And by hit, I mean not only that they got the specific mail with a specific attachment or link, but they opened it. Uh, some of them were blocked, some of them were not block, blocked. Most of them were not and data identified by any, uh, by any uh, defense uh, mechanism. Um, and uh, we were very worried that this might spread to other organizations and the numbers will multiply. Finding uh, more distributors were one of our worried, uh, worries. We did not find any more uh, distributors and uh, let's say that by the start of uh, November, we managed to contain the entire campaign and uh, make sure that all the proper uh, antivirus companies, security companies would uh, sign and uh, uh, make sure that uh, they know all the indications that we had, all the IOCs were shared with them as well in order to uh, deal with that in a wider uh, uh, matter. Uh, there are some uh, questions that are left open regarding uh, that specific campaign. Uh, it was very wide on a large uh, amount of uh, different sectors that we did not understand why or how or when. Um, some insights regarding some insights regarding the the incident itself. Uh, we found that having a call center which is accessible to the public sector is very, very, very effective in the, our role as a, a national uh, cybersecurity actor. Part of our role is to defend and to mitigate and probably uh, as much as we can prevent cyber incidents as the one that I described uh, here from happening within the Israel cyber arena. Uh, normally, the indication comes from the organization where they are, um, let's say, aware enough to uh, raise the flag, call us and say, listen, I suspect something. 
As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of false positive and it takes a lot of resources to handle that, but we try to develop the methodology, uh, the understanding from our experience uh, on how to find the, the specific ones that can uh, uh, allow us to identify as quickly as we can and as effectively as we can the potential pandemia within uh, our arena. So we see huge advantage in working with the public sector. We understand that it is the most important player within our uh, ability to handle such incidents. And uh, on, as part of uh, the general director agenda, we are going to extend the cooperation and collaboration with the public sector exactly and specifically to prevent these kinds of events of happening within our nation. Three uh, minute warning, Ken. Three minute warning. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm actually uh, pretty done. Uh, so uh, as of now, uh, everything is uh, actually uh, not so quiet within uh, our cyber incident arena, but the specific campaign uh, is no longer working within our uh, arena, uh, as far as we know, of course. And um, that's it for me, Hank.